ですよ Welcome, Welcome to, to Maple, Maple Springs. Springs. We're, so We're so glad you're here. here. And, and if this is your first time being here with us, we are so glad that you're here. We want you to feel at home. If you have any questions, um, anybody around you can answer it. Um, just let us know. I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. Did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, I felt like we were very blessed this year in spite of everything. So um, let's go ahead and sing this one. We're going to start out with a song that many of you are going to know, and it may be new for some of you. It's called Good, Good Father. And, and I just felt I like it was so appropriate, appropriate um, in keeping, keeping in line with Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving this week, because, because he, he is, is a good, good father, father and, and we're, we're so blessed, blessed that he is our father. father. So, so sing with sing us this morning. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're
a good, good God. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I love by you. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, as you can tell, uh, I am not Bill. I have more hair than Bill has. Just saying. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, I am, I'm Tracy Marsh. I'm the youth pastor here at Mabel Springs. And, and, I, and, and Brother Bill gives me the opportunity uh, to speak every once in a while. And I appreciate that so much. Uh, as we get started, uh, uh, being Thanksgiving time and, and Christmas time, typically there's a lot of traveling going on. I, I know a lot has been curved with with COVID and everything, but uh, even with that said, uh, they said that uh, some of the numbers for people flying uh, was still uh, really high this year. Uh, with that said, if you know me, uh, you know that I don't like to fly very much. Uh, I just, I, I don't. Uh, I, I will if I have to, uh, uh, but I'm a lot like uh, V.A. Baracus, Mr. T., uh, you know, you, you really probably need to drug me before I fly. Um, but uh, I, I guess some of that stems all the way back to my first uh, flight. Uh, the first flight I ever went on was actually to Honduras. Uh, and I made the mistake of watching videos of the Honduras airport, people coming in and out. Uh, it's one of the, the, the scariest airports to fly into. And I'm, I'm not saying just scary as far as... Uh, people are shady. I'm talking about it's one of the shortest runways, uh, international flight runways. So as you're coming in Honduras, they don't just automatically just come in for landing. No, they circle around the bowl uh, that the airport is in, and they're circling around, and you're flying at an angle. And if you're on that side, you're looking out, and you're seeing the top of houses not very far from you as they're coming around. And when you land, they, they throw the emergency brake. And so you're skidding to a stop because the, the, uh, the runway is just so short. So, so that might play a little bit into my fear of flight. Or you, uh, something else that plays into that fear is uh, uh, Mr. Randall that sits back there. He gave me a pep talk about my first time flying uh, and, and all the bad things that could happen. But don't worry, if anything bad happens, you're just going to die anyway. So that was his pep talk to me as I'm getting ready to... Uh, uh, he's here for me. Uh, yeah. Uh, or, or maybe it's even, you know, going a little bit deeper than that. Maybe it's even the pep talk you get from the flight attendant before you even take off. Now, again, I've never flown in all my life. And so we get in, uh, we get on the, the airplane in Greensboro, actually. We're flying from Greensboro to Atlanta and then down to Honduras. So we're in Greensboro. We're on the plane. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just, I'm a wreck. You know, I'm, 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 I'm not feeling it at all. And I'm sitting beside, I can't remember if it was Elizabeth or Lindsay. I was sitting beside one of the Bullens. I think so. And, she, and she's sitting there, and she's like all calm, cool, and collective. And, and I'm sitting there listening to this flight attendant trying to make notes on, on what I, <laughs> you're, what, you're talking way too fast. And, uh, you know, she, she starts on, you know, the very, one of the first things to talk about is the, the seatbelt. And you need to make sure you fasten that seatbelt. And I'm sitting here in my mind thinking, is that really going to help <laughs> if something bad happens? And then she goes into the flotation device that you put on. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, from Greensboro to Atlanta, what's the chance of us hitting a big enough pond that that's even going to matter? <laughs> And then even as we're flying from, from Atlanta to Honduras, I'm sitting there thinking, now we are going over the ocean for a time, but I'm thinking, okay, if we're at cruising altitude, yeah, I don't think that flotation device is going to help very much uh, if something happens. And, and then she goes on into the oxygen mask that drops down. And, 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 and she talks about how when it drops down, you need to make sure you put your oxygen mask on first. Before you take care of anything else, take care of your oxygen mask. And, and, and I'm sitting here thinking, uh, no matter what's going on around you, make sure you put the oxygen mask on before you help the, even the person next to you. Even if that person is not able to put their own mask on, you need to make sure you get your mask on first. Because if you don't get your mask on and get oxygen to you, you're not going to be able to help anybody. And I found that very interesting uh, that 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 how true that is that that you got to make sure that you take care of yourself before you take care of somebody else that's the title of today's message take care of you you need to make sure that you take care of you and, and yeah that sounds kind of off when we're talking about our christian beliefs 
take care of you first. It even sounds kind of selfish, I guess you could even say. Take care of me before I take care of other things. It is selfish. It's sort of kind of if you, if you look at it in a certain way. But before you, you decide to tar and feather the youth pastor about making yourself first, uh, make sure you listen to everything that I talk about today. Uh, make sure you look at the whole picture uh, when we talk about this. And now let me go ahead and explain myself just a little bit. Um, you need to make sure, uh, yeah, you're taking care of yourself spiritually. That's what we're talking about this morning. Make sure that you take care of yourself spiritually before you help others. Uh, making, uh, making sure you are where you need to be with God. Make sure your heart is where it needs to be with God. That's our key as we move forward today. Make sure that's right before you go any further. Now, it is our nature as Christians. I said it sounds kind of selfish. And in a way, it is because it's our nature as Christians. If we follow Christian principles, that we put others before ourselves. I mean, I've stood up here and preached that. I've said that so many times. I've beaten the youth with that over the years, that we need to make sure that we put others first. We need to make sure that we put others before ourselves and an example of that this isn't our scripture today uh, we're actually going to be in Luke chapter 10 uh, but but setting that up in Philippians chapter 2 uh, verses 2 uh, no, chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 it says do nothing out of selfish ambition that there's that's that's that selfish part uh, don't our vain conceit rather in humility value others before yourselves I mean, we get that. That's, that's the Christian mentality. That's the way that we need to be thinking about this. Not looking, in verse 4 it says, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. Now, Scripture is saying right here that we need to make sure that we put others before ourselves. We, yeah, we need to take care of those that are in need. Absolutely, positively, without a doubt, we need to make sure that we're taking care of other people. Uh, we need to give to the poor. I mean, we've seen that throughout Scripture. We need to take care of the sick. Absolutely. I agree with that. Love your neighbor. I mean, that's, that's, that's like one of Jesus' commands. Love others. And I agree with every bit of that. But what I'm, what I'm, what I'm telling you today, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is take time. For you. Make sure you take time for you. Uh, uh, care for yourself. Even more than that, take time for your relationship with Christ Jesus. Make sure that you, that you do those things. See, that comes first. That has to come first before anything else. Like the flight attendant said about the oxygen mask. You got to make sure you take care of you before you take care of that person that sits next to you. Make sure you have your heart where it needs to be. That's where we're going today. That's where we're going to move through as we look in, in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Uh, now, and as we go into those verses, remember, this is not a battle uh, between helping others and taking time for yourself, taking care of yourself. That is not a battle uh, that's not what I'm getting to at all today. There's, there's no battle there uh, between those two. But more than that, it's a priority dilemma. We need to make sure that our life is lined up with Christ. That's, that's where we need to make sure that we start. Uh, uh, because we could be doing good things for other people. We could be doing really good stuff for other people. But is it always the best thing that we could be doing, especially when it comes to our spiritual lives, when it comes to, to our heart condition. Uh, today we're going to look at, at how, good, uh, how good things, how really good things, how good stuff can distract us. They can worry us. They can even irritate us at times to the point that we miss out on that one-on-one -on -one time with God. We're missing out on that relationship with God. We're missing out on what's best in our lives because we get so busy doing some other stuff. We're going to read further into this in our scripture today. Like I said, Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 38 through 42, and it reads, Now it happened as they went, uh, as they went 
that he entered a certain village. Now they're talking, this is Jesus walking. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken from her. Let's pray over our scripture before we go any further. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for the lesson that's right here in front of us. Father, lead us and guide us as we open up the scripture today, Father. Lead us and guide us in our thought pattern. Father, when it comes to the business of the world and the worship of you and sitting at your feet. Father, lead us and guide us in that. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. So as we read our scripture today, as, as we look at the scripture as a whole, let me start out with just a question. Have you ever been so busy with something that you forgot something important? Just regular life, just, just everyday life. Uh, you've, you've been so busy doing A that you forgot all about the most important B. I mean, have we ever done that? You've been so busy with work, guys, that you completely forgot about that anniversary. Have you ever been that busy? Or, or busy with your day-to-day -day routine that I forgot to stop and get that birthday card. I forgot all about her or his birthday. You've been so busy with family stuff that you forgot one of the most important parts about the family. That's your child that's still sitting at school. Is you forgot to go to school and pick them up. Have you ever done that? Or you've been so busy with, with Sunday stuff, with church stuff, that you forgot your child at church, Jay? Oh, I'm sorry. I said that out loud. It's not just Jay. Carol forgot her. Forgot him too, though. So. But she's not here, so I had to pick on you. Uh, but have you ever been so, so, so busy that you forgot something? Or, or maybe you've been so busy with life You've been so busy with life that you forgot all about that mortgage payment that's sitting on top of the refrigerator that your wife gave you to mail off. And 20 years later, she still doesn't let me forget about it. <laughs> yeah, that one hits home, right? Now, that's, that's, that's my, uh, I got so busy that I forgot. Uh, but you get the point. You, you, you get it. Uh, you've been so busy that you miss out on something really important. We've all been there. We've all done it. I don't care what your age is. You've done it. Hey, uh, kids, you, you've sat there and, and you get so busy, caught up in whatever you're doing, whether it's schoolwork or whether it's, it's the fall. You, you've been so busy that you completely forgot about what your parents told you to do. We've all done it. Every one of us can relate uh, to this story in Luke today. Every one of us has done it. You've missed out on something important. Especially when, uh, think about this, especially now that we're moving into one of the busiest times of the year. And if you say that you've never gotten caught up with something, and if you, t you, you can sit there and honestly tell me that, no, this has never happened to me, I would have to quote Buddy the Elf. You sit on the throne of lies. Because you have. You have forgotten. You have been so busy with life. And you fill in the blank. Whatever you want to fill in there. You've gotten so busy that you've forgotten about something else. Think about how busy it is right now. I mean, we, just, we, we have just gotten through Thanksgiving. So we could check that off the list. But, but even further than that. The, 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 think about it, Thanksgiving and Christmas. The food. That you're going to be preparing. The, the family that's going to be coming in or out or around. you got work that has to be done somewhere in between all that time. And all this coming into uh, Christmas. It's a busy time. Now this year has been a little bit different. For the first time in a long time. We actually slowed down in the Marsh household a little bit during Thanksgiving. Because we didn't have all the family coming in. We decided that you know what it's just going to be us this year. 
And that was nice. We were able to focus a little bit more on each other. And it was really nice to be able to slow down and do that. But typically, no. You're going so fast and furious on everything that, that you completely forget about you fill in the blank. What I'm trying to say is we've all been there. See, our scripture deals with this very thing as we move into it. Busy work. The stuff that has to be done. The stuff that's all around us versus sitting at the feet of Jesus. All that stuff. Today we learn to take care of the most important thing first. Make sure you take care of that most important thing first. And that's Christ. That's why I said earlier when we first started that, that yeah, it sounds selfish on the outside, but as, you, as we look at the Scripture and as we start to, to, to dig into it, it's not really selfish at all. Because who I'm not actually putting myself first. I'm putting Christ where he needs to be, where he has to be first in order for everything else to come out. Put Christ first, just like the flight attendant told us. Make sure you put yourself first. Make sure you take care of that most important life-giving aspect before you take care of others. Take care of the heart condition first. But see, that's, that's where the rub is. All too often, that's where the rub, especially in our scripture today, see, we have one lady that is all about serving. We have Martha here that she's all about uh, serving, and then we have the other sister, Mary, that's all about worshiping at the feet of Christ. See, that's our dilemma. Serving versus worshiping. Doing the really good stuff versus sitting at Christ's feet. Making sure our heart is where it needs to be. Because think about it. This is why there's a rub here. Because isn't both of them good? Absolutely. They're, they're both good. They're both part of our Christian walk. Serving others is what Christ told us to do. Being there for others is what Christ taught. Putting other people before ourselves is, is throughout the entire Bible. But making sure Christ is first in our lives is the most important. So both of them are good. Both of them are part of our Christian walk. And we see throughout Scripture that, that we're both serving and worshiping are, are done over and over and over. See, it flows, if, it flows throughout the Old Testament. And then Jesus Christ taught it himself. So, so what's the problem here? What's the problem with the, the doing good and the serving? Where's the, where's the rub? It's a heart issue. It's, it really comes down to being a heart issue. And we, the church, uh, the ones that are sitting here this morning, we need to make sure that, that our hearts are in the right place and not settling for just good enough when it comes to sitting at Christ's feet. Instead, we need to be reaching for what is best. Yes, take care of you. But taking care, taking time for you and taking care of that relationship with Christ that's what we're talking about. And like I said, I know it sounds selfish, but it's not. It's not. You need to take care of you. Make sure your heart is where it needs to be so that you are able to help others. And that's where we're heading this morning as we're breaking up the Scripture. Now, we're actually going to go to the last part in verses 40 and 41 first. And we're going to jump around these verses because the first thing we need to look at this morning is the heart of the servant because that's where the first problem uh, comes in. We see this with Mary in verses 40 and 41. But Martha was distracted. In verse 40, but Martha was distracted. But Martha was distracted. Man, how often do we get distracted, right? With much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Don't you care... Jesus, that, that, that my sister has left me here to do it all. Therefore, tell her to help me. Tell her to get up and come over here and help me. And, and here's Jesus' response in 41. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. Now, you know you're in trouble when, uh, when your parents say your name twice. Typically, you'll get, you'll get a little quiet uh, being at first. And then when you say the whole name, Benjamin... See, my, my son automatically looked up when I did that. Uh, 
uh, Jesus is here saying, Martha, not just once, but twice. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Martha has three major problems with her heart as it comes to serving. First, she's distracted. She's distracted by all the work that she has to do. She, she, she put that on there that she has to do. She has cleaning to do. Man, Jesus is coming into my home. I have family coming in. You fill in that blank. I have, I have my, my children coming in. My, 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 my in-laws are coming in. Uh, grandma's coming over. And you know grandma, she's going to look at everything to make sure it's clean. All these folks are coming in. I'm, I, so I got to clean. I got to cook. I got to serve. I got to make sure that everybody is taken care of. See, that's, that's, that's where me and my wife have our issues, that, that we get so focused so much, especially during Thanksgiving. I talk about how we always cook for the whole family. We get so caught up with the cleaning, cooking, and serving and, and make sure that everybody's taken care of that we miss out on things. Making sure that everything is taken care of. That's distracting. It really is. If you let it be, that's distracting. Uh, the, the stuff that you're doing isn't bad. The stuff that Martha is doing here, it's not bad. She's serving Jesus Christ. It's not bad what she's doing. It's really good stuff. It's just like the stuff that we do each and every day. The things that need to be done, right? But she's getting distracted. She's losing sight on what she needs to be, uh, what she needs to have her eyes set on. And then the second thing she does is she's worried. She's, she's, she's worried. She's worried about her cleaning and her cooking and all that stuff to make sure it's done right. She, she doesn't want nobody uh, to go without. Uh, she's worried about her distractions. How crazy is that, right? She's worried about everything that's distracting her. Talking about a double whammy there. Uh, she's so caught up in everything that she's worried to death that it's not going to turn out right. Is everything cleaned? Is everything cooked right? What if somebody's not happy with what I've done? She's worried. And then the third thing, and we actually see this in Christ's answer to her, she is troubled. She is upset. She is, she's, she's, she's disturbed by everything that's going on. And even a hint of jealousy, I believe, with what's going on. Nobody's helping me with the stuff that I'm distracted by. Nobody's worried that I'm worried. I'm all alone and nobody cares. She has a house full of people. Christ Jesus sitting in her living room. And she's, she, she thinks she's all alone. How often do we do that though? Does anyone see how Martha can go from busy work and doing the really good stuff to have Jesus in turn turn around and tell her that she's losing control. That's what he's telling her when, when he repeats her name twice. Martha, Martha, you're losing it, girl. That, that's what he's saying there. When he says her name twice, she's losing control. Now we see another perfect example of distraction in our lives. And actually, uh, uh, if we look back in, in, in chapter 9... Verses 61 and 62. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you. This is, this is a guy that's, that, that's there with Jesus. And he says, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm, I'm there for you. I, I'm, I'm absolutely all in. You know, how often do we say that? Man, I, God, I am all in. But listen to what he says first. But let me first go and bid farewell who are at my house. God, I'm all in. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in on this ministry stuff. But first, let me go take care of some stuff. You know, how often do we do that? And then Jesus responds to him. Uh, but Jesus said to him, No one having put his hands on the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, let me, let me tell you what he's saying there. Christ, I'm going to follow you. But first, let me go take care of this, that, and the other. You fill in the blank, however, whatever you need to fill it in with there. And then Christ uh, tells him, How in the world... How, how do you think you could follow me when you can't even walk a straight line for looking backwards at everything else that you got to do? That's what Christ is telling them there. 
You're so distracted by everything else in your life. You're missing out on this. That's what Christ is telling them. As, as you could tell, the busy stuff isn't something that we just came up with during our lives. This busy stuff that's been going on, it's been around since the beginning of time with Adam and Eve being busy. Uh, uh, and, and, and not only that, but we've been so busy that we're trying to put stuff in front of God. Not on purpose, but we do that. When we get so busy that we're distracted and so worried and, and so troubled that all of a sudden, God is nowhere in sight. Have we been that busy? Uh, uh, instead of what we see here with, with Martha, we have now uh, our sports, our jobs, our hobbies. And yeah, I'm going to sound like the really bad guy in church right now, uh, but, but I'm just the youth pastor, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but, but do we ever let church get in our way of worshiping? Huh, that sounds real stupid, don't it? Do we ever let church get in the way of us worshiping God? Let me ask a tough question. Have you ever been distracted at church? Something else is preoccupying your mind. Have you ever been there? Have you ever worried about what's going on at church? Have you ever been upset with things that are going on at church. Have those things ever gotten in your way of you worshiping? That's what we see in the scripture today. You got to think Jesus was in her living room. And she got distracted. Of course we have. Of course we have. And that's why I'm telling you today. That make sure you take time for you. Take care of you. When you walk into the worship service here in Maple Springs, take time. Take care of yourself. Worship God. Worship God. I'm not saying that things that distract you are all bad. I've told you that several times so far. Uh, the things that distract you, they're really good things sometimes. I know things have to be done. I'm guilty of being that guy that, that, that gets task-oriented. This has to be done. This, especially on Sunday. I'm that guy. But that stuff should, that stuff should never, never stop you from taking the best seat in the house. Where's that best seat in the house? At Christ's feet. Worshiping Him. That takes us to the next sister. Mary. In verse 39, And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard His word. She was sitting at His feet, guys. She was right there at Christ's feet. That's where we find Mary today. What do you find her doing? Listening. Listening to what God has to say. Listening to what Christ has to say. She lives in the same house as Martha. I mean, they're, they're all here together. She knows that there's work that needs to be done. She knows the cleaning. She knows the, the cooking, the serving. She knows all about the stuff that's going on around her. None of that matters because she knows what's the best thing to do. Then the second verse down in, in, in 42. But one thing is needed. One thing. One thing is needed. Out of all the stuff that's distracting, with all the stuff that, that Martha knows that needs to be done, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. That's what Christ is telling Martha. Your sister's chosen the right thing to do, and you're not going to take it from her. Not only does she know where she needs to be, but Christ himself says it right here. That's not going to be taken from her. 
Now, Paul gives us a, a, a great example of where our heart should be, where our minds should be uh, uh, when it comes to those things that are spiritual in Colossians 3, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Uh, if then uh, you were raised with Christ, that's, 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 a, that's a Christ follower, that's that person that has a relationship with Christ Jesus, seek those things which are above. Think about those things. Search out those things. Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. And then verse 2, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Stop letting the stuff distract you and put your mind on Christ. That's what the scripture is telling us. Stop putting your focus on everything else. Yes, we'll get them done. Yes, they'll get done somehow or another. But take care of your Spiritual needs first. Make sure you take care of your heart first. Take time for yourself. Take time for yourself so that you are right with God. Make sure your heart is where it needs to be. Again, I'm not saying that all that other stuff is bad. We'll get it done. But what's the best place for us to be? At His feet. At Christ's feet. We would never in a thousand years wake up in the mornings and say, you know what, God? I got so much stuff going on today. Man, I got I to gotta, I gotta shampoo the carpets. I got to sweep out under the couch. I got the, all the dust bunnies. I'm going to have to get rid of them. I got so much cooking to do. Man, I, I, I got pies to bake. I got cakes to bake. I got to... I got to get up extra early for the turkey. I, I got all the stuff I need to do. That you know what, God? I'm just going to set you on the back burner just for today. We would never wake up and say that. But how many times do we get up and do that? I'm guilty. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that, that as, I, as, I, as, I, as I put this sermon together, it hit me upside the head, especially coming through the season that we're coming through now. When our job takes priority. Now, I talked about the Thanksgiving meal and Christmas meal and everything. But how about when our job takes priority over God? God, and again, we would never get up in the morning and say, God, I got to go to my job right now, so I'm just not going to think about you. We wouldn't say that, but how often do we do that? You know what? My sports team, it takes priority right now. The things that my kids are involved in right now, you know, that, that's going to take priority right now. You know, the, the hobbies that I have, you know, man, I like to get out there and hit a golf ball. You know, that stuff takes priority right now. The, the cleaning and the cooking that we've already talked about, you know, that takes priority, right? The stuff, the stuff. We would never in a thousand years get up and say this to God. My life takes priority. We're not going to say that. But how often do we get up and do that? I don't believe Martha ever intended for all the distractions and the worry and the trouble that she finds herself in. She never intended. I mean, think about it. She had Jesus Christ coming to her house. Never would she have thought all the distractions get in her way the worry we get in her way, the troubles. She, she never thought that stuff would stop her from sitting at Christ's feet, but it did. She did. However, as soon as the work is started, as soon as she, she, she picked up the first broom, as soon as she picked up the first spoon, whatever you have, that's when it started. That's when, that's when little by little it started chipping away until she got so preoccupied by everything else that she lost sight of God. As soon as the work started, it took over. She quickly lost control. It was controlling her. Her emotions at this point was controlling her and the wheels started to come off to the point that she was getting jealous. She was jealous of Mary being able to sit there at Jesus' feet. 
She started to get worried about everything, upset over everything. And nobody else was helping her. That's all she saw. She had the blinders on at that point. I posed the question earlier. Have you ever been so busy with something you forgot something important? We can all raise our hands on that one. Our dilemma today. Serving versus worshiping. Are they not both good? Are they not both part of our Christian walk? Yes. I can see that answer to you. Both are good for our Christian walk. Both should flow from each other. You cannot have one without the other. I agree with that. But if you don't get anything else, get this right now. Take time for you. Take time to take care of you. Take time for your heart. Take time for your relationship with Christ. Make sure you have that life-giving force in your life before you ever help somebody else. When the oxygen comes down, put the mask on you first. Because if you don't get that part done, you're not going to be able to help anybody else. Same way with Christ. If Christ is not in your heart, if he hasn't taken control of your heart, how are you going to help somebody else? Take care of you first. Take time for you. Now, right where you are today as we finish up, right there where you are today, with all eyes closed and all heads bowed, don't worry. Here's that worry word. And don't be distracted and don't be troubled by the person that's to the left of you or to the right of you or in front of you or behind you. Don't be distracted by those things that are around you. With your eyes closed, this morning tell God you've come to worship Him today. God, I have come to worship You today. And even more than that, not only have I come to worship you today, God, but tomorrow and the next day and the next day. God, tell God this, that, that he is priority in your life. Now, if you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior and you're sitting there today and, and you're wondering about some of these things I've talked about, about putting God first and, 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 and making sure that he's your priority, if you've never done that, you know what, before you leave today, I urge you to come talk to me, talk to Brother Bill, talk to one of the others that's leadership here in Maple Springs, and, and let us sit down and talk to you about this priority that should be in our lives. Because it is a priority in our life. That relationship with Christ Jesus, that is our priority in our life. And then everything else flows from that. Helping others flows from that priority helping those that are sick comes from that priority giving to others comes from that priority all the other stuff that's in our lives comes from that one priority having Jesus Christ in our lives so if you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior if, he, if you've never given your life to him don't leave today without talking to someone I urge you, don't leave before you talk to somebody. And then maybe you're sitting here today and you have given yourself to Christ. You have, a long time ago, you, you, you gave your heart to Christ. You have that relationship. But for whatever reason, you've let things distract you. You've let things worry you. You've let things trouble you to the point that you're not seeing God very clearly right now. With your eyes closed, with your head bowed, tell Christ, tell God, you've had enough. I come to worship you. I come to worship you today. Worship you tomorrow. Come to worship you the next day and the next day. God, I put you as a priority in my life. Will you do that?
do that today. Right where you're sitting. Father, we thank you for your words. Father, we thank you for Mary and Martha that we looked at today. And Father, I pray that as we sit here, that we have a burning in our hearts, in our soul, that says, put God first. Put Christ Jesus first. That's our priority. Putting you first. And then let everything else flow from it. Let our Christian walk flow from that. And you know what? If we put you first, Father, I know, because I've seen it with my own eyes, that everything else just falls into place somehow. Father, lead us and guide us. And that is United for Southern Randolph. So that is uh, out there. If you're going to leave your stuff, please do. Uh, the second thing is for is I want to give you something to think about to give for Christmas. Okay, it's very good reading. Okay, it is a must not put down. You can get your proposed budget out in the hall, <laughs> out in the foyer. Okay. 
uh, and we'll be having a business meeting in December, okay? So please get you one of those, and we'll be voting on that probably uh, in December. All right, now the second thing is something Sandra wanted me to tell you, and it goes out to the ladies. Uh, do you want a sister? Do you want to keep it a secret? If you do, there is a secret sister form you can fill out in the foyer also uh, so you can have a secret sister. I wish I could have one. <laughs> Uh, uh, the, the next, next thing, thing is, uh, 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 there is uh, uh, we're still we're taking up for Backpack Pals, and, and I really I want you to remember that. that. Uh, uh, there's, there's a box, box out there in the foyer. Uh, uh, we, really we really need the food. Uh, there's, there's a lot of poor, poor kids in Sea Grove who do not get a lot enough to eat, and I want you to really think about them, and think about the food pantry, too. There's a lot of people out there who are hungry. I uh, talked uh, talk to some kids, kids the other day who said that all they, all they have for supper is popcorn. And they, and they share, share it amongst their family. family. And, and so, so think, think about, about that. that. Think about that, that there, there are, are families out there, there who are really, really in need uh, of our, our help. Okay? okay? And then and the, the next thing, thing is tonight there will be no Bible study. We'll be back next Sunday because of Thanksgiving this weekend. All right? Uh, as, uh, as far as prayer requests, uh, uh, we want to remember our shut-ins, shut all the uh, uh, people who aren't here, here our senior adults, adults uh, definitely, definitely want to remember them. them. This is kind of a scary time, time for them, and I'm sure it is. Uh, I want you want to remember, remember Ann, Ann Davis, Davis as she is recovering. recovering. Uh, she is at home. Uh, remember uh, Ken Garner, that's uh, uh, Shelly's husband. He went home on Monday, and he's doing better. Pray for Lois Garner, and she's still having health situations. Uh, and, and also, also remember, remember Bob, Bob Scott, Scott as he's having surgery on his shoulder today, okay? okay. Uh, they're, they're very, very bad, bad, so. Is there, is there any, any other prayer requests? Request? Uh, if there's not, uh, I want us to talk about uh, the video we're fixing to watch, and the theme of it is together. You know, we've all heard it said that many hands make light work. And we and know that there are a lot of uh, missionaries, missionaries out there in the foreign fields who are struggling. And because of the coronavirus, they can't go out and they can't, uh, they can't uh, raise money like they used to. They can't do certain things. They have to be very, very careful. Uh, and, and I said foreign missionaries. And so what that means is that, that they're, they're overseas. They can't just come into America and just and come to a church, church like they used, used to because, because of the COVID. And, and so, so if, if we, we work together and we raise enough, enough money to help these people, people we can, ha we can see a, a revival of people, people to come to Christ. Christ. You know, we're, we're asked many times, we ask God, God save people. people. God, bring God, people to Christ. Christ. Well, now well, we now can we put our feet to our prayer and we can actually do something about it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show the video. For many weeks, our churches have been unable to have physical gatherings. But by God's mercy, the Church of Jesus Christ continues. The Southern Baptist Convention continues. For 175 years, we have pressed forward together through wars, disasters, plagues, economic downturns, and political upheavals. Our effort of proclaiming Christ around the world has never stopped. Your support, your prayers, your gifts, all of us working together 
as the body of Christ have kept our missionaries on the field over the decades and keeps them there now. God is at work around the world in the most amazing ways, and He is using you, your family, and your church to help your missionaries, our missionaries, as they move forward with the gospel. The Derbyshires partner with churches in the United States to lead mobile clinics all over Thailand using medicine as a means to share the gospel with those who have no other access. Christ is proclaimed, disciples are made, and churches are planted. In Kenya, IMB missionary Kristen Lowry believes the very best place for a child is in a family. That is why she is working alongside National Kenyan Partners to rescue boys living on the streets, restore their lives, provide shelter, a trade, physical and spiritual nourishment, and reunite them with their families. The Worthy family has recognized the importance of investing in relationships and in Italian culture, which is why they have planted their lives in Italy for the past 17 years. College students, have dropped the term hard places from their vocabulary and are responding to go anywhere in the world where people don't have access to the gospel. We treasure Jesus and his gospel above all. But let us remember, we are not called to hoard the gospel, but to herald it far and wide. We are not called to stockpile the gospel, but to send it forth to those yet in darkness that they may see the light of Jesus Christ and live. As you can see by this video, it's, it's not, not just the fact, the fact that we're, we're giving, giving, and the most the important most thing is that people come to know Christ. Christ. But as, as you've seen by the video, video it's, it's also helping young men find, find their family. family. It's, it's helping, helping uh, children, children find a family, family, a loving family. family. And, and those, those are, are very, very, very important. important. And we know we that because we are in a loving family. But we would like to have that, see other people that same way, to have that kind of relationship. Uh, uh, next, next Sunday, Sunday we'll, we'll begin the Lottie Moon, Moon uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas offering. Uh, uh, we, have we have a goal, goal set for five thousand dollars, and, and I believe that if we all work together, together we can do it, and, 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 and we can be a blessing to God. God. We can we lift up His holy name. name. We can increase His kingdom, kingdom. And, and, and we can, we can uh, just uh, be, a be a blessing to others around us. Okay. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here today. I want to thank you for your generosity and giving. Uh, for, for the, the offering, offering. and uh, we're going to close, close in prayer as we pray for it. Thank, Thank you all for coming. Dear Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, Lord God, God we, love we love you so much. much. God, you, you are, are so worthy, worthy and so, so wonderful, wonderful, and so, so mighty. God, God, you are love, and we want, you want, want us to show your love to the world around us, dear God. Lord Father, I pray, Lord, that we'd be willing to do so. And God, that we'd be willing to give, that we would be willing to give our of our finances, we'd be willing to give of our time, we would be willing to give of our reputation and whatever else we need to give to see people come to know the Lord, Lord Jesus as their Savior. God, we love you so much and we thank you for the power and the might, God, that you have allowed us to have through the Holy Spirit that we might go out not in our own power, but in the power of Jesus. God, we love you, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would fill us with the Holy Spirit. Tell us, God, what you'd want us to do, Father, to lift up your name, to glorify your name, God, and to see the kingdom of God increase. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, God, for everything you're going to do. And I pray now that you bless the gift and the giver, dear God. And I pray you would use it for your glory. God, may your name be shown throughout the world. We love, we love you, 
and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.